much it, you probably already know by now. Myself and my good friend Gordy Much won the championship in Praga Cup UK. And I've documented that journey over the course of a year, and you can find a playlist for all those videos down below in the description. Hey but my most hey viewed guys. video from so last year was not from any of those races. It wasn't even on the main channel. It was a clip of me spinning at 140 mile per hour, which is 240 something kilometers and not only did i walk away unhurt i missed absolutely everything and the car somehow came away with zero damage so in today's video i'm going to break down how the hell that happened and what i could have done differently so let me set the scene uh, it is right at the start of last year and it's pre-season testing at donington on the first of march if you live in the uk you will know it's pretty chilly in march and also rains a lot and it was no exception for that day at Donington. Whilst the sun was out the track was completely wet at the start of the day and at this point I hadn't quite got the hang of every little part of wet driving. I was still finding my way there a little bit. And this pre-season testing for me is about the only proper running that I'm going to get before I get into the car for the first race at Silverstone in a couple of weeks time. So we're out there trying to make the best of it. Now, as I said, it had been raining fairly heavily overnight. So the track was wet. And my first run was actually in these sort of mixed wet conditions. Gordy took the first session just to make sure the car was all set up properly. And I went out in session two on a circuit that was still definitely wet, but started to have dry patches form. To add a bit more context to the video, the Praga R1, the car that of course I drove this season and in this video and the one that I bought recently, is a 360 horsepower sub 700 kilo aero QT. Very very quick but a proper driver's car in the way that there's no traction control and no ABS. It's all on the driver and both of those things are going to come into play later on in this video. So here's my first session. I'm just coming out the pit lane now. You can see just raising my hand to show the marshal my armband. You have to wear armbands at these events to signify that you're allowed to drive. And we're out to circuit for the first time this season. Now, as I said, we did have a sort of media day um, before this where I drove the car a little bit, but not really properly. That was mainly for Gordy to shake down the car and make sure everything was working. This is, these are my first proper laps really uh, of the season in preparation for the first race at Silverstone in about a month's time. Or so so uh, as you can see it's quite wet out of the circuit and I'm being very very cautious overly cautious in fact so much so that if you just keep an eye on the dash there you'll see this little blue warning pop up there it is which basically just says ECT low and the translation for that to us is Jimmy you're going too slow the car is getting too cool these cars have a very specific operating window if you're outside of them uh, the software of the car will start limiting you on power and revs and stuff like that. So I need to go out there now and start actually getting up to speed a little bit. But as you can see, I'm I'm a little bit scared at this point. I never really had any good experiences in the wet in the Praga. And every time I got into the car, at this point anyway, I was always a little bit fearful of what the car could or couldn't do in the wet. Again, given that there was no traction control. But after a few laps, you know, I pulled my finger out a little bit and we got rid of the warning and now getting up to some sort of speed. Now, given that it's wet around here, it's differing lines to normal, but the circuit is starting to dry. You can actually see just about there. I know it's a bit overexposed. You can see the darker patches on the circuit. That's where the water is and the lighter patches are where, of course, it's drier. Now, take note of that massive shadow on the left-hand side of the circuit there. See how I'm avoiding that? The reason why I'm avoiding that is because under that shadow is just water. The sun hasn't reached that part of the circuit yet, so it's had no chance to dry, and being there on, on tyres is not really a good thing. See, I'm getting into it now. I'm doing the, old, the rev up gear shift, which means that I'm gonna try and go quick now. So now we come across the start finish line, and you can see I'm getting quicker at 15 2, not really a quick time in the wet, but still better than I have done so far. And uh, I'm now getting quite confident. Now, notice how I lifted to the lap before. Watch this lap down the Corona curves and watch what happens when I try and commit just a little bit more on high revs. <laughs> Round we go, not once, but twice, the 720. Now I managed to get the clutch in here, so the car's okay. Um, but then I get a bit enthusiastic there and stall. So let's, so this is spin number one of two today. Let's go back and deconstruct that a little bit. So you can see here, I go into fifth gear, and I just catch it a little bit of the wet, and before I know it, I'm already round. Uh, these cars, because of the aero balance on them, if you start sliding in a weird way, you just you just go. And there's not much you can really do about it, apart from hang on for dear life. I got very lucky here, didn't really go off into the grass at all, just went off a little bit. Um, tires were okay, they didn't flat spot too much, but um, yeah, um, a little bit of an indicator of 
what was to come a bit later on. So car is all good from what I can tell, but just as a precaution measure, I'm going to come back into the pit lane, get things checked over before going back out again. So yeah, not an ideal start to the day, spinning out like that. But to be honest, for the confidence, it was a bit of a good thing, because I now knew where that limit was. And obviously you don't want to find the limit by sending the car off a circuit at high speed, but it was still good to go and do that. But now we're going to fast forward to the next session. So this time, it's a bit later on in the day, the sun's been out all day, and cars have been going round all day as well. So I'm on slick tyres. And for me, slick tyres on a circuit like this, on a sort of drying circuit, is a little bit scary, but it's something that I had to really learn to get used to. Uh, this season. So I was pretty excited to get out there and just go and learn, basically. So again, I went out to circuit and I was hit again with this um, this warning for ECT temp. And this time, actually, you know, I was quite confused by this guy. I had a pretty decent warm up lap on the way through. And you, you're going to see now what happens when you have this uh, warning on. The car has a sort of soft limiter at 6,000 RPM. So uh, it actually turns out we didn't have enough tape on the car. It was getting it was getting cool too much. So I came back into the pits, put some tape on the car, and then went back out. So we're back out on circuit now, and I'm really starting to get into it. This is the best part of uh, any sort of track day or test for me is when you start to feel one with the car. But I want you to look at something. So we're going down this straight now. I want you to look at where I brake on here because that shadow is still there on the left, and I'm not braking all the way over. I'm braking about two thirds away of the circuit and then coming over to change the chicane. The reason why I'm doing that is that part of the circuit is still wet and on slick tyres you don't want to be on wet <laughs> at all. And the best thing about the session so far, as I know, is that I was catching other Pragas on circuit. Now, bear in mind this is a pre-season test, all right? Bear in mind we're right at the start of the season. I don't know anyone's pace yet. So, to find myself in practice catching other Pragas, it means good. We have pace on these guys and it's always a nice feeling. Uh, when that happens. Even if we did have a little bit of a moment coming down the Crane Curves here, see that car in front there? That's a very, very slow Formula One car, and we're all just forced to basically slow down behind it. It's cool to see this old F1 yeah, car out on circuit, team. but it was going so slow um, that, yeah, it caused a bit of a traffic jam, but hey-ho, we're up again, no damage done. Right, so we finally passed the progress, and we have some clean air, which is good for me, because I've been chasing this 106 the entire session. I know I can go faster, but every lap I've had traffic, so I've not been able to go and do it. So uh, we're coming on to one of my fastest laps now, but I want to show you something quick. So we're coming down here, hit that pause button. Now, can you see my mouse here? Just this tiny strip here on the left. That is where there is still a tiny bit of water. Now, I confess, at the time at speed, I didn't see this, so I moved a bit further over this lap to see if I was able to do it. I was, so I kept that in mind as I went on to my attempt at a hot lap. You can see old looking BRM slash Van Wall slash Lotus thing in front of me. I have no idea what it is, but you can see I'm doing the old rev up gear shift again, which means that I'm happy and I'm going to go for try and go for a quick lap. I was convinced I could quite easily get into the 105, so I wanted to try and do that before the session was over. And you sort of have a feeling how long the session has been going on for. So we go down the hill through T1, not so bad through there. Now, Craner Curves, you have to be flat through here or you lose time. So I'm completely flat on the left there. 230 k's through the left hand and heavy on the brakes, a little bit of a wiggle from the rear there. That sort of unsettles me a bit for the old hairpin. Also, my line wasn't great through there, to be honest, but it was okay. I was still up on my best time. So up the hill now, up to sixth gear, 220 k so we break, we go down to fourth, fifth, and then third. Grab the curb on the inside there of McLean's to hook the car in, let it then run wide. And now we come up to Coppice. It's kind of blind in the car, so you have to guess where it is. I kind of got it okay. It could have been a bit further over to the right-hand side. Now, I've remembered that I can break further over to the left this, this time around, so I'm going to try and break as hard as I can with as much room as I can on the left-hand side. Mash the brakes and... Oh, around we go. Oh, every time I watch that, man. So as you can see, the mixture of adrenaline and the oh sh I nearly just died kicks in and I'm there panting in the car, just trying to, just trying to really understand what's just happened, where I am on circuit, am I okay, is the car good? All these things going through your head. So let me break down what happened then. You see, as I hit the pause button here, you can see that little bit of wet strip on the side of the circuit that I told you about before. Now, I haven't seen that in the cockpit. I think it's gone because that shadow is still sort of there from the big shed on the left. And because it's still there, um, my eyes just don't pick this up. So I hit the brakes hard. The rear wheels lock up instantly as I've touched that uh, bit of wet there. The slicks have no grip on that. And I am sent flying between the chicane and the gravel. The only thing I remember in this moment is, oh my God, I'm going to go into the barrier. Then I saw the tires there and 
it was all over before you know I knew it happened. Um, it was mad, and I am so incredibly lucky. I did not one right off the car, two hit anything or anyone, and three there was a gravel trap on the other side. Because if that if that was grass on the other side, I would have just been launched into the pit lane pretty much. So. Um, yeah, a pretty scary one. So what could I have done differently? Realistically, just not break that far over on the circuit. If I had braked on this part of the circuit, I would have been completely fine. And that is just down to inexperience. But yeah, that's how I spun at 140 mile per hour in the Praga and pretty much got away with it somehow. The only thing that needed replacing from what I remember was a wheel bearing. That was it, the car was completely fine otherwise but yeah a gentle reminder that racing is very dangerous and it can bite you when you least expect it and you might be thinking jimmy why have you put this video out because you know i'm to be real with you i'm looking to try and drive as many cars as possible and get out there and enjoy racing for as long as i can so you think maybe showing this isn't a good idea but i think it's good to learn from these mistakes i know exactly what i did wrong in that situation and if you don't take the time to look at your mistakes especially in things like racing and in sim racing too and don't acknowledge what you did wrong then you're never going to learn from it. Despite my couple of issues there of a sort of wet and a drying circuit, I'd, we'd go on to win a wet race at Silverstone later on that year. And part of that progress is me learning the hard way at Donington what not to do. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Bit of a different format. I thought it'd be really cool to sort of delve into this stuff because it is, it is the off season and I'm bored. I want to be I want to be around cars some more. But if you did enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe, do all the good stuff, and, and let me know your feedback on the video. Let me know if you liked it or not. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you next time.